And I think you have to kind of do a little mic check or something, or you have to check to see whether or not we actually are live. Oh, hello, check, check, mic. Hello. One, two, one, two, hey. I'm not sure. I think we are live, though. It seems, it seems to be telling me that we're live. So I think, I think we are good. Um, in which case, then, uh, hello, everyone. Um, today, I am interviewing someone called Anaf Kalam. He is the journalist of whom has been reporting specifically on Uthman ibn Farouk and his alleged stabbing that happened in San Diego in America. Um, as a few of you might know, I had a quick confrontation with Uthman uh, that lasted all of four minutes before Uthman decided to do a quick runner. Um, yeah, uh, Revelation 22.13 says we are live. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, and I reached out to enough to have this chat because I was really interested to get his perspective, uh, to understand the things that he's uncovered, what he now thinks about this story, um, and just to sort of introduce, I guess, enough to, to the YouTube community, really, because I imagine there are a lot of people who are aware of your articles, that are aware of the things um, that, that you've uh, published. And we'd love to hear more about your opinion and, and I guess, your background as well. Um, so a few moments ago, uh, me and Anaf were talking about uh, his background. Uh, we were talking about whether or not he was a Christian. Um, and I guess, Anaf, if you'd like to sort of repeat back what you said <laughs> a few minutes ago. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, thank you for having me on, uh, on your show here. It's a great pleasure. Um, well, uh, you know, in line with what I was saying here a moment ago, uh, I am a ex-Muslim. I am hesitant to use the term atheist, uh, maybe just because uh, I know so many atheists who've put a bad taste in my mouth from that term. But um, with regards to Christianity, I, I would call myself an agnostic that is sympathetic to Christianity. Uh, I was kind of saying earlier about how I am, a, so I'm a first generation immigrant in the United States, and I came from a Muslim family and if for nothing else, I will say that I am very grateful to live in a place like the United States or like the West where uh, it is to, to some degree or any degree basically dictated by Judeo-Christian ideology. It's, uh, it's where we get our, I'd like to say, our moral ideas, our, our, many of our laws, many bits of our constitution. Um, but uh, in terms of how much I, I am a believer is uh uh depends on what day of the week it is i suppose <laughs> we have a we have a saying which is kind of like you're not a believer yet maybe <laughs> maybe uh maybe in a few days maybe <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah you know it's, it's quite interesting because your perspective is actually quite a common one particularly at speaker's corner um you'd be surprised because i'm not sure if you're aware of the kind of dynamics uh at speaker's corner in hyde park in the uk but we have I guess you would say kind of about 20% Christians and 70 to 80% Muslims. It, it, it's overwhelmingly one-sided. Um, this so is in Hyde have, Park? This is in Hyde Park, yes. This is in the, the legendary Speaker's Corner. Um, I've been attending there for about a year now. Um, but you will find people... Um, religiosity, they don't have any care for belief whatsoever. They have nothing to do with Islam or Christianity, and yet they will talk to you and they will do everything they can to help you uh, defeat Islam intellectually. And it's a very, very interesting thing because they don't care about Judaism, atheism, Gnosticism, Christianity, nothing like that. They mm. only care about one thing, and it's because they see the culture and they see what's happening in the UK and they see like uh, Hyde Park as a reflection of that. So it's quite strange. Um, there's a lot of support for anti-Islamic views, which is, you know, surprising, I think, in a lot of ways, because you would think that people would um, sort of choose to just go their own way and, and not really focus on it. But people realize that this is kind of the zeitgeist of the age, um, especially in the UK. There's a, there's a lot of um, heavy Islamiz Islamiz Islamization, I guess you would yes. say, in the UK. Um, but yeah, that's, that's great to hear. Um, obviously, I hope one day you uh, you look further into Christ, but um, I'm sure you're very yeah, much... Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm about halfway through uh, 
C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity. So Ooh, are you? <laughs> oh, a, nice. I, I am quite moved by it. So maybe we'll uh, have a have a talk afterwards. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I, I also like C.S. Lewis, um, as you can imagine, a lot of Christians do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very popular, especially in the UK, since he was from here as well. Um, so where, where were you originally from then? You said that you, you were a, was an immigrant to America or you, was it your parents who were? Uh, uh, yeah, my, my parents are immigrants from Bangladesh. Uh, I was born oh, okay. and raised here, but uh, they, they're both from Bangladesh, which is a, a uh, basically a Muslim country. They're officially secular, but it's something like 95% Muslim. Right, right, right. We have the, kind of the same um, experience here because m much of the immigration that comes to the UK it's from two countries. It's yes. from Pakistan or it's from Bangladesh. I mean, there are obviously others as well, but like a large proportion is from those two places. So well, that's interesting. <laughs> but um, okay then. So I guess let's start off by talking about how you got involved in this. Like, how did you first uh, be interested in this? Um, yeah, take us on that journey, I guess. Yeah. So uh, it began when I was actually researching for a different article that I was writing about uh, Uthman ibn Farouk and an appearance that he was going to be doing at a mosque in Tampa Bay with another uh, radical Islamist imam from Denver. And while I was doing that research, that's when I had come across that video about Uthman getting stabbed. And I watched the video, I, I saw the photos, and it did not what I saw did not pass the sniff test for me. Uh, the photo looked to me obviously fake for so many reasons. Uh, the acting to me was just comically, <laughs> comically bad. Uh, th there was that article in the San Diego Union Tribune that was just extremely vague. Uh, it didn't. It wasn't even absolute in knowing that the police department had any records or evidence, or that uh, they'd been able to get into contact with anybody. And um, so, you know, I, I saw this and I have actually written uh, several times in the past about other, uh, call them Islamophobic hate crimes or, you know, instances of Islamophobia that happened. And basically all of them uh, turned out to be staged. And one of the things that is characteristic about all of them is that they always will use it to gain the public eye so that they can say that, oh, the Western media will not cover this because they're uh, Islamophobic. The police will, you know, they won't investigate because they're Islamophobic. Uh, you know, groups like Islamist groups, in this case, like CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, will always pounce on these uh, uh, stories as soon as they hear about them, never even bothering to uh, check if, if they even happen before dishing out their accusations of Islamophobia, wherever they can. But after I saw all of this, I uh, decided first maybe to do some kind of elementary digging. So I looked on San Diego's uh, police records that are all available in public databases for their city. And uh, the, the most easiest to access is their hate crime database. And I imagined that would be the easiest database to parse through that information. And of course, there was nothing. Uh, in fact, the only other hate, hate crime reported that day was like two women in a fist fight in the other end of town. Um, and so then I thought, okay, maybe uh, it was maybe not reported as a hate crime. So I went to the city of San Diego's records on their website. It's, it's, it's all publicly available. You can uh, do this at home if, if you'd like right now. Um, and they, when I put in that query, they required a date and a location for the incident. And since the police, according to that article, had apparently no idea where this happened, I, uh, well, I figured I'd watch the video a couple times and uh, I'm lucky because uh, Uthman is quite sloppy. <laughs> In, uh, in, in covering his tracks and these things. So uh, I was able to pretty easily figure out this location. And from there, I, uh, I, I submit that information to the police department. And once again, they turned back with absolutely nothing. 
doing my due diligence as a journalist. I thought maybe I'm just uh, asking the wrong office or maybe I misspelled something. So I got in touch with the police lieutenant who Uthman had uh, apparently been in touch with, according to that Tribune article. And uh, and again, nothing. Uh, he was very brief and to the point in his response. And he said, uh, this gentleman did not file a uh, police report. And that was that. And so I'm like, okay, wow. uh, you know, this is something. And actually, I kind of started uh, at this point kind of drafting an article about it. But I, sh even that one email was still kind of not as solid of a foundation as I would, as I would like. And uh, I happened to be scrolling through my Instagram feed that next week. And that's when I saw the clip of Uthman on the Green Lane podcast. Uh, and that's where he says that the attacker has been arrested and they got his fingerprints from, <laughs> from the knife that <laughs> Uthman had managed to wrestle out of his hands with apparent superhuman <laughs> strength, uh, <laughs> which that also just obviously that to me was not true. They could have easily just gotten the security camera footage and license plate. I, there's no way they would bring in a DNA <laughs> forensic specialist for this. Um, so anyway, I, I learned of these new developments and I gave Lieutenant Adam Sharkey, who I'd been in contact with at San Diego Police Department, I gave him this new information and I'm like, hey, uh, this guy now says that somebody was arrested in connection to this crime, which you just told me he didn't report. Like, it, can you, can you uh, corroborate this or any of this? And Lieutenant Sharkey says, well, basically for us to pursue uh, anything, really, there has to be a police report or a record of it. And without that, the off uh, our officers don't even know, you know what, they're, what they're looking for. So there could not have conce conceivably been a arrest regarding to the case. And so I, re and so I heard that. I released the first article, and then we got <laughs> and, uh, Uthman's video, uh, right. which, you know, I, pretty predictable for, uh, for Uthman. I, uh, I figured he was just going to like wave some, some papers around and not really tell you anything. And it's exactly what he did. You know, he just uh, turns around and calls everybody names and all kinds of uh, Islamophobes. <laughs> and, uh, he, he then claimed that Al Jazeera had an article with a police report and an arrest record which uh, uh, assuredly they do not. Uh, they, they reported on it, but they also did not have any arrest records or police reports or anything. Uh, he then go, I mean, he then says, oh, if anybody is a real, uh, real news journalist and wants to cover this, I mean, the San Diego Union Tribune reached out to him and by any estimation, I'd call them a real newspaper. And uh, they, they got nothing even before uh, me, uh, even before I had reached out to Uthman and published my story at FWI, I reached out to Uthman over uh, his personal email, his One Message Foundation email, his uh, YouTube live Q&A sessions, and even what I'm quite sure is his personal phone number. And uh, no answers. Uh, sometimes, you know, I just get ignored, uh, like on that live Q&A. But so, uh, just real he, quick question, he, he had nothing. And then... Oh, I, well, I yeah. can imagine very much he, he had nothing. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, what was I going to say? There was something, when you mentioned the video that he, he made in response, right? He made this uh, this, this sort of quick video where half of it wasn't actually related to the topic, half of it was something completely different. And the first half right. of it was just him talking about how he's under attack, people are trying to discredit him, you know, I'm the victim, that kind of mentality. And then he waves this piece of paper around, doesn't doesn't <laughs> show you the piece of paper. It, it, it's kind of like, you know, you have to be kind of a, a little bit, quite a lot of stupid, to not realize that to get rid of this whole thing, just show the piece of paper, you know, like, like of all the things not to do, you, you would have thought that it, would be the thing, right? It would take but, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, when I when I met him yeah, at and, the biggest corner, I, I said to him, like, um, 
you can refute me in five seconds. You just need to tell me a contact detail that yeah. I can use to validate what you're saying. And that's it. Like, you know, you don't need to talk to me anymore. That's it. But um, yeah, he brought up the whole Al Jazeera story. He thought that that was some kind of defense. Now, I hadn't actually looked at that at the time, but I thought this was, I, I, I could bet money on the fact <laughs> yeah. that this is just a random article that doesn't tell you anything new that is literally just repeating the same yeah. narrative that he's already said. Um, so I, yeah, I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trusting that. But as soon as I saw the video he made in response, where and, he uh, you know, I think he, I knew it was fake. I knew it was fake at that point. I knew he was lying. <laughs> <laughs> so as you were saying, yeah, uh, I think he really shot himself in the foot, even by, uh, even by releasing that video. Uh, I like to think that that was probably 50,000 people who didn't even know about this scandal or about my article. And then he releases this, this bombastically uneventful video where like five minutes of it is him uh, talking and calling, calling me, calling us Islamophobes. And then he's talking about like doing dawah or something or another. But that, that like most of them probably had no idea this was happening. And surely some of them... I mean, unfortunately, many of them are, are believing everything he says, but I, I like to think that some of them at least are uh, actually clicking on the article and they can see the uh, email correspondence and the screenshots and all the evidence. But that's, yeah. that's just my yeah, Well, I think you're right. I think there are people that are seeing it and they are waking up to this because uh, I'm not sure if, if you're aware of this, but he has been involved in other instances um, where, I mean, nothing on this kind of scale nothing about like faking a hate crime but he has uh he has basically claimed uh what was it a particular hadith he, he uses islamic literature uh and he takes a footnote from that islamic literature and he tries to claim it as an actual uh, uh yeah legitimate hadith. <laughs> oh uh footnote farouk <laughs> <laughs> ever want a bit of a laugh then yeah you can watch that um and he gets caught out and, and people tell him look we know that you've lied because either we have to think you're very, very dumb and you didn't understand what you were doing, someone who supposedly is an expert in hadith, or you're just deceiving people. You're, you're just giving this out so that you can get people off your back and oh, yeah. worry about it. Um, so he's, he's, got a rec he's got a kind of um, a reputation at this point. For, yeah. And, for, uh, and actually like, one yeah. thing that actually was not uh, reported on really at all uh, and, and this probably will actually interest you. Um, according to, uh, I don't know if you watched Ali Dawa's video about the incident. That uh, So basically in Ali Dawa's video, another Islamist uh, friend of Uthman, he is showing screenshots from a conversation uh, supposedly with, uh, with Uthman's son. And Uthman's son is telling him that... Uh, Apparently, before the video started recording, the the attacker was shouting, "Jesus is Lord," uh, oh, at wow. Uthman, and so so you know what he's trying to do, right? He's trying to project, and he's trying to call. Uh, he's saying, "Oh, it's the Christians and Hindus and Jews and atheists who are who are resorting to uh, violence," and it's it's total projection. Yeah, yeah, I can I can definitely see that. Um, there is especially people like Alida because they, they come to the corner and they engage with uh, me and Bob and other people at the corner who are Christians. There is kind of like a, a big a big desire to slander and to sort of make these kind of narratives up, um, mm. especially since... Are you, are you familiar with Hatun? Hatun being stabbed? Hatun mm. is... Um, is he, Hatun, the, is he no, the guy no. from... Uh, sh she's, um, she's like a Turkish lady. She's an ex-Muslim. She comes okay. to Speaker's Corner. Oh, um, I'm not familiar. About last year, she was stabbed at Speaker's Corner in public in front of a lot of people. Um, and the attacker was wearing a, a COVID mask as well as like a, a raincoat. Mm. So you couldn't see who he was, but he was on camera and um, people uploaded it to their channels to show this happening. Fortunately, she was okay. Hatun was all right. She was bleeding heavily, but she went to hospital and she, she lived to fight another day. But um, yeah, ever since, you can watch Ali Dawa's video to that, for example. Yeah. And he actually has the nerve to say that it was a, a Christian who did it. 
he says he, he basically he makes the the title of the video um a christian stab hatun now what or something like that right uh like paraphrasing but then when you click on the video he admits that it wasn't a christian who did it he was just saying what if it was a christian who did it uh that is so, it's, so dishonest yeah when, when i saw that i was i was fuming because i just thought wow that's so dishonest so you know i mean when when i actually heard about the whole uthman thing when when i heard he was allegedly stabbed i thought okay well you know what i don't know if this is real or fake i'm not gonna lie i think the blood looks like more like ketchup than anything else it doesn't look like real blood it's somehow gone up i know immediately that looks great and, and of course you have to believe that he had the time to take the selfie <laughs> so he was stabbed he picked up his phone and went wait 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 wait, wait. i'm not gonna tell anyone just give me a second you know like holds it up to himself and then takes a picture you know <laughs> it's it's <laughs> It's, it's, it's like bizarre. It's comically bad acting and uh, the, the entire thing. Uh, you know, the best thing he could have done uh, in response to uh, learning about this article for himself would probably just be to pretend he never saw it, to never address it, because, well, we now know he's making that uh, documentary about this, this non stabbing. And it's going to be the, the most I, shortest documentary or the longest <laughs> documentary, depending on depending on how he does it. But um, I, uh, I imagine he's going to pull some uh, fight scenes from some Bollywood movies. And <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, wor I I'm kind of worried. Maybe it's that the problem is that he's starting to believe his own lies. But, you know, he keeps trying to double down. He's going to get himself into some legal trouble here. Uh, he's going to be forced to falsify police documents. Uh, maybe go back to the police store where he bought the uh, fake blood and get a police costume. I, he's, he's, he really <laughs> should just pretend this never happened. And <laughs> Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's in too deep. I think he's yeah. gone so far in that he needs to get out somehow. Um, and I don't know what that's going to look like. I, I think really he just has to hope that people forget. You know, he, he, waits it, he waits it out and then enough people just, you know, forget about yeah. it and move on. But I don't know how that's going to happen because I, I do think there are sincere Muslims who follow Uthman, who yeah. do look up to him. And we've already seen it on the other sort of escapades he's been on when he's told these huge lies and been caught out. We've seen people, especially on Twitter, who have just said, look, we can't follow this guy. You know, he's, he's openly a deceiver. Um, yeah. So, so there are people who are starting to wake up, which is good. Um, and hopefully this is another one of those occasions. Hopefully from the work that you've been doing, from the, the emails that you have and, and the evidence that you've got. I think I, I think I remember, I don't know if it was on your Twitter, but I think you said something like you recorded a phone call with, was that, was that you? Was yeah. That you? Um, so there was a period right, uh, right after I released that first article and uh, Uthman's little like henchman, this guy, uh, Muhammad Salah, he uh you've, you've probably seen all of his replies on twitter and youtube where he is saying oh well uh the shake is gonna prove you wrong the shake is gonna and he at some point says in a few tweets which uh, i mean I, I have screenshots but he says in a few tweets that uh well uthman actually reported this to the la mesa police department which is yeah he said this uh, to me about I think. the whole la mesa. yeah the hmm. La Mesa is a city in San Diego County, and it's about 10 miles away from where the incident supposedly happened. And uh, I called them just because, uh, well, I saw these tweets and very shortly after he had deleted them. But, but again, in those tweets, he made a definitive statement uh, that could be provably, you know, debunked. So I called the La Mesa Police Department. And they, they told me a few things. First, uh, I was told that if this incident happened in San Diego and he reported it to La Mesa, which apparently does happen, sometimes people will like drive away from an incident and then report it to some you know small, uh, small town police department nearby. Yeah. But if that were the case, and if that were the case for any nearby police department, they would just transfer that case over to SDPD. And then uh, I'm transferred over to the lieutenant in charge of uh, the records. And I kind of told her what I'm investigating, and I sent her the original article I'd written. 
And so she looks through La Mesa Police Department's records. She looks through the sheriff's records for the county. She looks through all of the nearby San Diego hospitals to perhaps cross-reference a police report with an incident there. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, she looked through like some of the basic county court records, and she found absolutely nothing. Wow. That is and, nice uh, and that was before I reached out to the district attorney, who then also said, uh, which yeah. I don't think that uh, reply could have been any more damning, where they said, we have not received this case from any law enforcement agency. Yeah, because I mean, he's he's now sort of dug himself even further because now he it isn't just that an incident happened and he was injured. Now there was a a, a criminal or, who supposedly did the event, who did the attack, was then apprehended, arrested, uh, and then charged. So I mean, and there's no record of this at all. And at that point, it's like, wow, that's none that's a complete lie. And, uh, you know, my, my prediction is that uh, in this documentary, he will show us how uh, his uh, alleged attacker has now <laughs> embraced Islam. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, what he's going to do is he's going to find the same guy that was in the video yeah. and uh, go up to him and, and do this whole thing with him about how he's now, he forgives him <laughs> because of how merciful he is. And, you know, it's, it's bizarre, but I... I yeah, from everything you've done, I think it's quite evident at this point. I mean, how would you how would you even defend it if you were Uthman? How would you go from here other than just make this documentary and <laughs> try and and try and get out of it? I don't think there is anything, right? I don't think there is mm. anything to say at this point. No, you know, um, who was it? Was um, it might have been the people at DCCI Ministries, or it might have been you know somebody uh, somebody. Connected just to, to just to quickly mention, uh, DCCI Ministries is Hatton. You know how I was talking about Hatton. Oh, North okay, Australia yes. Yeah, it's, it's, she is the spearhead of DCCI. It's Ministries. Hatun Tash, is that right? Hatun Tash, yeah. Hatun okay, Tash. yes, I, I am familiar. Um, I I actually was not aware that was uh, an ex-Muslim female. I just saw that name on yeah. DCCI's video. But right, um, right, yeah. Uh, I think it was them. It might have been uh, JAI. Is that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, it was one of the two, but they recently did uh, a video on, on the Uthman stabbing. And they, uh, uh, I forgot what I was, where I was going with this. But, <laughs> um, it'll, it'll come back to me. Um, so I, I think I'm, I know what you're referring to. Uh, if I remember right, there's a video that there was Jay and there was, I think she calls herself Daughter of Christ, I think it is. Yes, yes, um, that's the one. And they went through quite quite a long live stream where they were just talking about everything that, that sort of related to to the case, and they brought up a lot of your materials. They showed the emails. Um, yeah, and I think that's uh, that that was pretty comprehensive. Like, <laughs> I think that yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing that we have that kind of clarity. It's very rare that you have that kind of situation where um, you can quite clearly show that someone has been fabricating a story, like a narrative. And enough, are you still there? And give me a sound if you are there enough. He may have gone, I think he might have been in like a, a cafe or, or a public place. So I think maybe he's had to quickly drop off. Oh, is he there? Enough? Can you hear me? Mm, hello? Well, I can hear you a little bit enough, but you're lagging. Hello? Hello? Hi. You can hear me? Can you hear me? Enough? No? Okay, I'm just going to give him a few minutes to, to reconnect because I think 
he's in a public place. I think maybe the Wi-Fi there is not very good. He was having issues um, with his phone earlier and with his laptop. So I'm guessing those issues have come back to haunt him. Because I can hear you just a little bit. You're kind of like, you're there, but you're just lagging a lot. Like your internet is really, really bad. And uh, hello. I can see you in slow motion. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Um, is my audio OK, guys? Just real quick. Am I really quiet? Am I over loud? Just give me a quick audio check so I know if I need to change any settings. He's going to pass a black hole. Right? <laughs> OK, so in the meantime, while Anaf is fixing his audio, I'm going to quickly go through some of these comments and just show some comments that you guys have have made. So even for no stage is an attack. Yep. I like this one, the Jesse Smollett of Islam. I think that one works quite well. Enough, can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, can you see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you, which is okay. like a much bigger improvement than before. So <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah, sorry about that. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what happened, uh, I think it was with my internet here. No, no worries. Are you in a public, like, are you on public Wi-Fi? Yes. Right, okay, that, that might explain it a little bit. But yeah, no, no worries. Um, so do you have any, like, um, going back to what we were talking about, do you have any plans for what you're going to investigate next? Or, or is there anything that you, you think could be investigated? Or do you think it's just done and shut at this point? You know, you've looked at uh, uh, the Mesa uh, Police um, Department, San Diego Police Department, the District Attorney. And I guess uh, oh, you, uh, mentioned, you mentioned it also included things like the hospitals, right, nearby? Yes. Um... Well, well, that was all, uh, that's, we, you know, we've basically covered all our bases here, but I am still, I'm just curious what he's going to say next. Cause he also doesn't seem to realize that he just keeps giving us uh, more and more content to write about the more he digs himself deeper. Um, yeah. my, Oh, that is uh that's what I, that's why I brought up that, um, that DCCI video, uh, they had mentioned in that video, uh, you know, kind of what you're saying here. What is Uthman going to do next? How much further is he going to dig himself? Uh, and they basically said that they think, well, there's nothing left to do unless he says, oh, I, I used a different name. This is not my real name. And, and I'm starting to think that he might start to watch these videos just to get ideas that he had not thought of himself yet. <laughs> and uh, so in the next video, if he says, oh, Uthman ibn Farouk is not my real name, and I reported it under you know, X, Y, and Z, uh, I, I will not be surprised in the slightest. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised either. But remember, though, because um, something he said to me was that he can't give me the information because if he did, he will be doxing himself and his real name. <laughs> so... Either he was lying about that, because that obviously implies that his real name was the name that he used, which is different from Uthman. So what, what, what I mean by that is, um, 
I don't know. I, I find it dif- difficult to believe that. I think that he's he's just digging more and more holes for himself, really. But I, I, don't, I, I don't know where he can go, truly. <laughs> Yeah, definitely so. But I mean, um, that that time last Sunday was the first time he actually came to Speaker's Corner. So we had never seen him before, and I was amazed to to have caught him. Um, he he turned up, and he had basically sort of went to a corner of Speaker's Corner, and then he kind of had his own little entourage around him, and uh, he he made it very clear that they were kind of vetting who they wanted to come and speak with him. So. He, he really did not want to engage in debate at the corner. Instead, he kind of wanted to give his lectures, give his speeches to the Muslims, those who would come there to see him. And um, there was a Christian that came up to him to, to debate him. And he immediately, the crowd tried to get the Christian away because they didn't want Uthman talking to anyone else. And then, uh, yeah, finally, he managed to debate him. And that did not go well for him. So he did a runner. And that's when I caught up with him and uh, I asked him the questions. But um, yeah, I guess uh, apologies for not remembering your name in the heat of the moment. Oh yeah, that's uh, that seems to be the only thing he had on you is that you can't remember the journalist's name. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, bizarre really. I, I mean, I was about to go pull up some of your articles to actually show this, to actually show like who you are, like this person is saying this. Um, but I think if I did that, I don't think he would have cared. I think he would have um, labeled you, actually. I mean, well, I'm, I'm guessing at this point, the backlash towards you and whether you, I mean, whether that's happening now or whether that's something that's going to keep happening in future is, I guess, a slander on your name, I'm guessing, right? From that uh, well, uh, the thing about the term uh, Islamophobia is that it's, uh, it's a very hard accusation to actually prove. Because uh, they're they're very unclear about what it actually means, and typically they use it interchangeab- interchangeably for uh, does not agree with what I think about Islam, or yeah. person who has criticism of Islam. And I mean, they're uh, you you probably know as well as anybody how they hijack these uh, things about like race and gender, and then they try and squeeze Islam in there to have the same effect. Yep, very, very much so. Um, and I also guess, given that you're a an ex-Muslim, I'm guessing it's also sort of doubly like a what you call it. It's more upsetting to them because an ex-Muslim yeah, is making these kind of critiques. There's that, and then there's just the whole aspect of uh, uh, you know my my commute, my family, many of my friends are all Muslims, and it's uh, it's such a damn shame to see otherwise very reasonable intelligent people just fall for this so easily because they want to believe in a narrative that frankly i don't think is there uh but they're willing to you know like all like everything we've seen on twitter and social media about this they're willing to uh totally ignore the evidence totally ignore uh everything right in front of their eyes just so they can hold on to this idea that uh muslims are persecuted and christians are evil and they're out to get us and stab us yeah well that's pretty much the same here in the uk it's very much that kind of narrative although i think it's further along so in america like you'll have to forgive me because my my knowledge of america is, is fairly limited but my understanding is that you have a state which is is it melbourne is Melbourne a state or a city? I'm not quite sure. And you have um, Dearborn, or is Dearborn the state? Dearborn, yeah, that's right. It's a it's a city in uh, in the state of Michigan, but yes. Ah, right, right, okay. So my understanding is that most the largest Muslim population in America is in that particular city, basically, or so near around that that area. Um, yes. So um, a lot of uh, interesting things coming out of Dearborn. I'm not sure if you saw the recent incident where there was a school a public school board meeting and a number of christians and muslims had basically you know joined forces and put aside their difference and they were talking about some of this like uh, lgbt Uh, trans stuff that had been appearing in uh, public school libraries yes i did read about this 
Yeah, we, we actually have something very similar in the UK. As, <laughs> again, the same sort of thing. Um, we had uh, Muslims who were protesting against the introduction of LGBT, QIA plus whatever it might be, um, material to, I think it was either the second, I think it might have been primary school or secondary school. Um, and to be honest with you, it, it's something that the, I think the, being a Christian myself, I do agree with the understanding that LGBT is not um, not what I would describe as a morally good thing in terms of its behavior. But sure. The Muslims are very passionate about that and they, they actually go out and they protest and they can do it in sufficient numbers and they can, do, they can actually sort of, uh, pack a punch if you see what i mean whereas i'm not sure yeah. maybe, maybe that's the same in america with the christians there but the christians in the uk it's very different it's it's much more watered down we're we're sort of more diverse we don't we don't congregate as much as we we used to yeah um you know i think in in the us uh this might be true in the uk and parts of europe many muslim groups like this might actually have the upper hand here because you can't just say, oh, these are just your run-of-the-mill white Christian bigot zealots or whatever. Uh, they, they have the shield, and it's one of the things that I'm sure in, uh, across the West nobody really wants to come to terms with, which is uh, what happens when you know liberal ideas open the way for the most illiberal people among us and give them cover. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. There's there's a great sort of um, difficulty, really, because it, it, I mean I understand that you're not from the Christian perspective, but if you if you're in the UK and you you're a Christian or I guess even an atheist actually, really, there isn't any kind of equivalent. So when someone does something and they accuse someone of Islamophobia, mm. there is no equivalent term. So in effect you're kind of stuck with this label and there's no e equivalent term, if you see what I mean. So you're, yes. you're always constantly on the backslide. It's, it's a very morally weighed uh, argument from the very beginning. And it's very difficult to get around. And I think it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to combat. Um, I think really it's things like these that actually help us probably the most because we get to take these people who are, who are leaders of their community, who are very well respected, and we get to say, look, you you've done some really horrible things. Um, <laughs> and, you're uh, not, not you don't even, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and uh, you don't even have to say a word of your own. You have to just let their actions and their records speak for themselves. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, you, you just keep encouraging them to speak because you know, when they speak, it's just going to be condemnation of their own actions. And it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of amazing how it all plays out. But, um, it, so are you going to say, Oh, no, no, go on. So um, we're coming up to 48 minutes now. Um, so I guess uh, people can contact you on your Twitter, I'm guessing, your Twitter yes. handle, which I put in the description. Um, I don't know, is there any other way for people to reach you if people want to get hold of you, to email you or um, something? Typically, uh, Twitter is probably the best way. It's just uh, my first and last name, uh, Anaf Kalam. Uh, I, I respond to my emails, uh, same thing. My public email is just my first and last name Anafkalam at gmail.com. Um, I usually sit in front of my computer and my phone all day. So I am quite responsive if anybody would like to reach me. Nice. Awesome stuff. Um, I see, I would like to say we could take questions, but I'm not actually sure if I want to look for the comments and see if there's anything there. That like <laughs> oh no, my uh, my camera went down and everybody <laughs> has decided. I... Oh no, that's all good. I like this one. Can you see the Can you see the the screen at the moment? Um, I'm I'm looking for the right screen on my phone still. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone posted, uh, "Uthman will never be a truth man." I think that's pretty. Good. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. That's uh, right up there with Ibn Fibbin. Yes, Ibn Fibbin. You've heard a Ibn Fibbin footnote. Yeah, <laughs> you heard that one. Yeah, that's that's related to the uh, footnote. Uh, footnote tonight. My my favorite is uh, the ketchup shake. Yes. Oh, here we go. We got one from Shamunian. Hi, Sam. Good to have you here. Chris the speaker's changed the name Uthman to Uth Uthman. <laughs> oh, I see. Right, right. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think it's Uthman. <laughs> I'll have to change that. But uh, yeah, what else have we got? 
Yeah, just going through comments, but I think I think we're good. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, it's, been, um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Well, yeah, it's you as well. Uh, yeah, I, I know it's getting late there. You're uh, it's nearing like uh, ten o'clock over there. Uh, yes, yes, it is coming up to ten. But um, uh, well, <laughs> it's been been a great honor having you on, and uh, this has been my first live stream. So thank you for being a part of that. Oh yeah, of course. More. Well, uh, it's been my pleasure. Um, happy to. Uh, Come on anytime. Uh, should should Uthman release that documentary and then we have new stuff? <laughs> it will be great comedy. Great, great <laughs> comedy. We'll get a great laugh out of it, I think. All right then. Um, take care, everyone. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.